In this question, we have a solution composed of two components. We have our caffeine, which is the solute, and then the chloroform, which is stated to be the solvent. The other information we are given here is that the molality of this solution is equal to 0.05 molal, lowercase m. So what that really tells us is the following. We look at the equation for molality, and we see that it tells us the moles of our solute divided by the kilograms of our solvent. Now given the molality is 0.05, we could actually interpret that to mean that we have 0.05 moles of our solute, which is the caffeine. So we already know the moles of caffeine in this solution. And then that would be divided by just one kilogram of solvent, which is the CH. Cl3. Notice if you divide 0.05 by 1, of course you still get 0.05. So you can interpret that molality in that manner by saying there are 0.05 moles of caffeine and 1 kilogram of the chloroform. Now how does this help us? Well, we do need to calculate the percent of caffeine by mass. So let's take a look at that expression next. The percent of caffeine by mass we'll just say that down here, that would equal the mass of caffeine, and we're going to need to figure that out in just a moment, divided by the total mass. Now, the total mass would be usefully broken up as follows. It would be the mass of the caffeine plus the mass of the chloroform solvent. Now remember, for the mass of the chloroform solvent, this value right here, we already know that that's one kilogram, aka 1,000 grams. So that we know, that's all set. We need to figure out the mass of the caffeine. That becomes our next challenge. Luckily, we of course have the moles of caffeine. So what we're gonna do is just simply grab the moles of caffeine here, and we're going to convert it, so to speak, into grams of caffeine. And you recall how to do that. You simply multiply by a conversion factor. And so what you would need to do is go to your periodic table and you would look up the molar mass of this molecular formula right here of caffeine. So you'd have to look up the mass of eight carbons, 10 hydrogens, four nitrogens, and then two oxygens. And luckily I've already done that and I know the molar mass, so we're gonna go Go ahead and proceed as follows. The molar mass is approximately 194.2, and that is grams of caffeine. So you'd have to write the formula again for caffeine here. And that will be over one mole of caffeine. And if you study the way in which we've set up this conversion, you can see that the moles of caffeine here in the numerator will cancel with the moles of caffeine down there in the denominator. So we'll go ahead and multiply this out. So 0 0.05 times the 194.2, and you will get 9.71 grams of caffeine. So now that we have the grams of caffeine, we can take that value and plug it in here for the mass of caffeine, as well as there for the mass of caffeine. And this is gonna help us get the percent by mass. By the way, when you do the percent by mass, we also have to multiply by 100%, of course, to get it into percentage form. So here we go. We're gonna do the percent by mass of caffeine, again, by plugging into this formula here. The mass of caffeine was 9.71 grams over the mass of caffeine plus the mass of chloroform. Remember, the mass of chloroform was the one kilogram. That's the same thing as 1,000 grams. So you should make sure you use 1,000 grams there, and then we'll multiply that by 100. And so if we work this out, we obtain a percent by mass of caffeine of approximately 0.96%. And that is of caffeine, so we'll write that formula one more time. That will be the correct answer to part A of the question. So let's go take a look at part B. And part B asks us to find the mole fraction of caffeine. So let's take a look next at the equation for mole fraction. And so here it is, we see that the mole fraction, it says of component, but in this case, our component is going to be caffeine. So we're gonna kind of replace that 
component with the formula for caffeine. And we can see that it's going to equal the moles of caffeine. And luckily, we will see that we already have that divided by the total moles. Now, be careful here. It says total moles of all components. So you would have to take the moles of caffeine, which is your solute, and add that to the moles of chloroform, which is your solvent. So this is kind of our setup to get the mole fraction. You don't need to multiply this by 100 because this is not a percentage. This is indeed just a fraction. Now, again, we know some of this already. Let's go and look for the moles of the caffeine. If we scroll back up, we discovered that the moles of caffeine was simply 0 0.05. So that's all taken care of. We know that. What we need to figure out is the moles of the chloroform. So that becomes the challenge of part B. So let's write this out, moles of chloroform. This will be our important calculation here. What we'll do is start with the grams of chloroform. Do you remember what the grams of chloroform were? It was 1,000 grams, because we figured out that the mass was one kilogram, and that was of chloroform. And then we're gonna multiply by a conversion factor. We're converting now into moles. So you'd have to look up the molar mass of chloroform. There's one carbon, one hydrogen, and three chlorines. And it turns out that when you sum those masses, you get 119.4, approximately, grams of the chloroform. And that is present in one mole of the chloroform. So we will work this out. Basically, 1,000 divided by 119.4. We get about 8.38 moles of chloroform. And that's wonderful because now we've got the components to figure out the mole fraction. Sometimes they symbolize mole fraction by this sort of X. I think it's a Greek X maybe. And this is for caffeine. So one more time, we'll write the formula here. Now that becomes kind of irksome. And here we go. We'll take the moles of the caffeine, 0 0.05 moles of caffeine. Divide that by the total moles and the total moles will be the sum of the moles of caffeine and the moles of the chloroform that we just figured out, 8.38. Sorry if my handwriting is a little sloppy there, but here we go. We're going to go ahead and figure this out. And when we do so, we will get a mole fraction of 0 0.00593, roughly. Now, there would be no units because you're dividing moles by moles, so they cancel out. This would be the correct answer to part B. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But of course, don't feel obligated. I appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.